everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie, and I'm here with Zenrock. Hello. And this is the series in which me and Zenrock will be going through all of Shonen Jump anime, starting with uh, Gintama and then also doing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Hopefully seeing every single episode from every single Shonen Jump thing in perpetuity until one of us just kicks the bucket and doesn't have to do the show anymore. <laughs> Uh, good to be back here. Until one of us perishes, and then the other one has to live on watching anime by their lonesome. Uh, we're here to talk about episodes 51, 52, 53, 54, and 55 of Gintama. It's the start of season one, year two (laughs) of the anime, I think. Uh, no, even though episode 50 was the actual start, but this is an actual stuff from the, the manga and not created wholly for the anime, but yeah. So let's get into it. Episode 51, Milk Should Be Served at Body Temperature. Why don't you tell us what it's about, son? Tell us about this baby. Oh, uh, Kentucky finds a baby outside the house with a little note on it that says, like, this is your child and I don't want to raise it anymore, so take care of it. I got uh, tired of it. And everyone, Yeah. Everyone just automatically assumes that he is, in fact, the father because the baby kind of looks like him. And he's kind of a scumbag, so they just don't trust him at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's going around to everyone, and then they're like, they're all like raising the baby. Like, Kagura really likes the baby, and they're all like taking care of it. And he freaks out and he runs to Okita, and he tries to get Okita to take the baby. And Okita's like, No, this is obviously your baby. Um, <laughs> Dumps and then he bumps into Otai, who uh, ends up hitting Sachan in the face with an ice cream. And then she sees the baby and the two of them and thinks that they have, they had the baby together. Uh, and they have this, like, she's this very dramatic scene where she's, like, running away in tears. And then she turns around and attacks Otai, and they start fighting. Uh, and they have, like, a dramatic battle. Um, and then Tay throws Kentucky in the river. Because uh, he was trying to run away while they were fighting. And then we find the picture uh, and some dudes show up to Otose's place with a picture of this girl and they want to find her. Um, And it turns out the girl is the person who left the baby and the baby is his grandson. Um, Gintoki is walking down an alleyway when he's suddenly like wondering if he's really the baby's dad or not um uh the people at otose's store catch the girl they find her she's like across the street at some like i don't know if she's working there or what but she's across the street behind a door uh and they kidnap her and so kagura and shimpachi uh find the they they see the picture of the baby and they're like this is clearly the same baby so they go after the girl to try to help her because otose gets a bad vibe um all these samurai confront gintoki and the baby and the baby looks nervous about it so gintoki decides to protect the baby and he fights them all off um he bumps into katsura while he's running away from them and Katsura, for some reason, assumes he's hiding in this, like, empty can of food. (laughs) Just, like, a little metal can, which obviously he's not. Um, And then Katsura kind of gives him the rundown of who the old man is, that he's, like, a dangerous businessman. Uh, So Gintoki decides to go give the baby back. Uh, And then we cut to inside the building, and the girl that they caught is being, like, beat up by them to try to find information on where the baby is. Um... Shimpachi and Kagura bump into Hasegawa, uh, who shows them around the building until they find the girl. And they break into the room because they get attacked by this blind samurai guy. Uh, and they are about to get attacked by all of the bad guys, minions. And then the episode ends on a cliffhanger with all of them getting jumped by the, the bad samurai. Yep, and that is the part one of the baby saga that we will finish up in the next one. But just to give some thoughts on this one right here, 
Um, I like that little note that they leave for the baby because it's very flippant for leaving behind a baby, which is probably why they assume that it is illegitimate child because says it just says this is your baby, take responsibility and raise him. I got tired of it. The baby jokes about like how much he looks like Gintoki are all so funny. They when, are. Uh, <laughs> when really Okita's like, like, no, it's definitely your baby. He's got your dead fish eyes. <laughs> He's got your dead fish eyes. I also like how much they immediately accept this baby as a part of their a part of their own. Basically, they give him like a bunch of different names. The first yeah, one, yeah, they being, buy like a bunch of baby toys and shit. Yeah, Silver J Fox being the first name that I think Kagura calls for him is yeah. a, a continuation of their fascination with Michael J Fox. Some other names is uh, Kintoki, which is I think what Atose calls him. Mantoki, which is what Shinpachi calls him. Ginraku, which is what Kagura calls him, and then Sakata No Good, which is what Catherine calls him, and all of them are just basically different variations of how to say Gintoki's yeah. name. And remember that Kintoki is the joke they've been using since the beginning that it means testicles. Yes. Uh, I thought that was great. I like the the gag of Okita where he says, I'm very busy, and he just like puts back on his sleeping mask and goes back to yeah. sleep. Yeah, he's like, I have serious business to take I, care of. I, I got some real serious business, and then they dump him in the river. And then when uh, Gintoki gets dumped in the river and he's like, how come nobody is listening to me? Because nobody is believing that this baby is not his. And then when he's uh, floating through the river, we see that Okita is still in the river. And he goes like, he tells him why no one's paying attention to him. But I thought it was funny. Yeah, he's, he's like, like, he says, uh, why is no one listening to me? And then Okita says, because you don't listen to anyone else. <laughs> Which is pretty good. Um, I like the, there is a, the brief bit with, uh, them, with, um, Sachan thinking that the baby is Tay's and his, um, where there's like a brief scene where all of them are like together doing the face. And for that one moment, I'm like, okay, I can kind of understand why <laughs> when they're all doing like this, the dead Yeah, they're making face. the exact same facial expression. <laughs> they do look <laughs> kind of like a happy family when you put it that way. Um, but I like the fight that breaks down cause she's immediately like. Oh, fuck. They also have, like, a lot of women jokes, which is, I think it's funnier that a lot of the women drop them as well. I think Sachan says when a woman has a baby, she ceases to be a woman and just is now part of the family. <laughs> yeah, that she's no longer a woman, she's just a family member. You're just a family member if you've already lost the battle. To <laughs> you've already lost that part of the battle. And meanwhile, as they're fighting back, she's like, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. What battle are we fighting? <laughs> Uh, that was great. Um, I also do like all the bits with the baby. Uh, like when he's sneaking away and the baby's on his back. Yeah, and, like and then they to... both turn and look at the camera making the exact same facial he's expression exact again. Same... <laughs> I thought that was really good. It really makes the case of this show would probably work just as good as Kentucky just had a little tiny baby version of himself everywhere he went. There's a really good... Uh bit too where the only thing the baby says is like data <laughs> at Kentucky. Yeah. That's <laughs> all he says. He also keeps having conversations with it. Um, fuck, what does he say? No, there is one bit after because there's, a, I guess, this reoccurring joke that starts with Hasegawa while he's in... Because before we see him when they go to the place where the mother gets kidnapped to, um... They have this conversation about um, what side your penis leans onto. If it's yes, if it's the most... most men pee left, then yeah. If you pee right, you're destined to be the future ruler of the ki- of the kingdom. Yeah, and that but that joke comes back later when Kentucky is cleaning up his um, diaper and he says, "Oh, you're right leaning. I see. That means you have the inheritance to the kingdom. <laughs> Lucky kid." <laughs> I thought it was very funny. Also, like, how he wraps up the baby and puts it on his back <laughs> at the end when he's ready to go deliver him back to, uh... Yeah, and then he's giving that speech, like, uh... Sake tastes best this time of year. <laughs> yeah, he's giving the super dramatic <laughs> speech. Yeah, he, like, tells the baby he wants to drink with him. <laughs> whenever he... Yeah, whenever you're older, we'll, we'll drink together. Um... <laughs> Real good. Uh, I also kind of like the setup because it was a little bit. It was a little bit of interesting setup at the beginning where they're like the the old guy is tr- is being very cagey about why he's specifically looking for this woman and then this baby that's been kidnapped. 
And then that brief look that he gives is enough to set Atose off to say, like, this guy's probably up to no good if he's not giving any specifics on anything without ever having to say anything. It's all told for, like, almost like the the joke from The Simpsons of the shifty eye dog. How do you know that the dog is the villain? Is that at some point (laughs) there's a close-up of the eyes and they go shifty? That kind of happens with this guy. Yeah, it does. (laughs) Which is pretty good. So, yeah, it was a good setup for... uh, the this the start of this baby arc which will end in the next one that I unliked it was a good fun bit again the oh oh, oh man another good one what well, the baby toys I think there is uh one of the baby toys is just a little mini silver Sadaharu which I noticed which I thought was nice <laughs> that they found like for the cradle up there's also a, a good bit where I think they're talking about we have to feed it something and I think Kagura immediately goes like, I guess I'll have to go go for the milk. And then he's like, no, d- what are you doing? There's literally nothing. You can't do anything. And then Catherine tries for it itself. And then they use the exact same excuse. I think they say that she's too old. Oh, no, no, oh no, yeah, because no. Kagura just starts unbuttoning her shirt like she's going to feed the baby. And feed the baby. And he's like, there's nothing there. And then Catherine says, like, I think I have I have the things to, to give him food because I've been having this pit in my stomach. He's like, that's diarrhea. That's not <laughs> milk for the child. So pretty good, and then I also like the 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 dude here that ends up being a little bit later on, which is his introduction, which is Okada, the dude who ends up being blind who fights uh, Gintoki in the next episode. It's a very interesting way of introducing him. So how'd you feel about it? Yes, it was good. It was funny. Uh, I liked basically everything you said. You liked. I liked the Naruto joke. That was pretty funny. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> For, uh, about Kana, Kanahamaru. <laughs> yeah, doing Kanahamaru's little speech tick. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, it was it was a good episode. It was a good intro because usually a lot of the cliffhanger episodes so far have been like kind of, eh, eh. Yeah, but uh, this one was good. Yeah, this usually save the best parts for the actually end of it. Uh-huh. So this is a good one. So why don't we move on to the next episode, which is called "If You Want to See Someone Make an Apo First," which is a pun on the joke that's here. Which I guess "apo" is short for appointment, but he takes it as apple. I, yeah, I assume it's supposed to be appointment, but yeah. uh, Gintoki reads it as a uh, apple. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like it? And I guess he doesn't that. understand why they're saying apple. <laughs> yeah, very dumb thing to get confused about. Go ahead, tell us about uh, this one. Uh, so. Kagura makes like a smoke screen to get them away from everyone, but the blind samurai guy finds them, uh, and so they're running away trying to escape these guys. While Gintoki is downstairs with the receptionist, like just trying to get this fucking baby back home because he just wants to get rid of the goddamn baby. Um, they tell him that he needs an apo, which is a, a, an appointment. And then he keeps thinking they're saying apple. Um, and he's like, this is stupid. There's so much red tape to, to go through. I need to get apples. Um, uh, he takes advantage of the fact that they get distracted by like a battle going on upstairs. And he just goes into the elevator and leaves uh, with the baby. And they're like, you can't do that. And he's just like salutes and walks away. Um They get cornered finally by the bad guy and the mother and everything. They all get uh, caught, and they're about to get attacked by a bunch of samurai. And then Gintoki shows up and saves the day. Um, The blind guy attacks and injures Gintoki and takes the baby. And the old man runs away with them, and Gintoki stays behind to fight the blind samurai. While um, they chase after the baby, you get some backstory about the mother and the son of this guy, who the son was very sickly. Um, they bonded because she like was a worker in the house, um, and then they ended up leaving together and getting married because the the son doesn't really like the son kind of resents the father because he feels like the father only cares about the business and not him um so they all leave or the two of them leave together and they kind of elope and have like a normal kind of like life 
regular quote unquote life. Uh, eventually, his illness becomes too strong, and they get found by the father who takes the son back, um, and then tells her to abort the child because he thinks it will stain his family name that, that he has a child with some like lowborn woman. Um, She doesn't, and she's unfortunately never able to see uh, the man again because he dies of his illness. Um, we kind of cut back to the present day, where well, we find out that he's targeting the grandson now because he wants an heir, because he thinks that he needs to have an heir for his business. Then we cut back to the present day, and Kentucky is fighting this dude. And it turns out that Gintoki had broken his sword when they had a clash earlier. Uh, Gintoki defeats him, and they end up having like a heart to heart, the the woman and the old man. And he kind of just kind of gives the baby back because he feels like shit because he finds out that the son had always remembered like the funeral. What what do you call those things in Japanese houses? Ah, uh, yeah, like the shit. The the it's like, a, it's like a mini shrine in your house to a dead family member. If you've seen Yu Yu Hakusho, you know it's the scene <laughs> with the yes, pic- picture yes. of Yusuke. That's what yes. I know it is. I'm pretty sure it's awake. Uh, and then they... Yeah, the, the man ends up giving the baby back and they kind of part and Gintoki bids the baby goodbye. Um, he does it by again asking the baby to drink with him one day <laughs> uh, after criticizing his <laughs> choice of what kind of milk he likes <laughs> after... yeah well the baby is drinking the milk and he's like what that's not good enough you're too young for a sake <laughs> um, <laughs> and so the uh, the baby starts crying when Gintoki leaves and so uh, the mom like runs back over to to say goodbye, and then or not to say goodbye to take care of the baby, and then Gintoki like gives this little thing where he looks up and he's like, "Spring's almost over," <laughs> and then it ends. Yeah, <laughs> a very <laughs> heartful way. They also do make. I think this is the first time that the baby actually cries because even when he was in the arms, yes, of the... he does not cry through any of that up to this point. Yeah, it's only at the end here when he has to no longer be with his good samurai buddy uh, that he finally breaks down and cries. So, things I like about it. Uh, let's see, where to start here. Uh, once again, all the stuff with the baby is uh, fucking great. Like when they're in the... Extremely in the- funny. When they're in the lobby and he's, and he's and they talk about the, uh, the apple and he keeps saying, Apple... And then the baby goes, Apple. <laughs> like, it's, it's yeah. like, Apple. And then later on, when he shows up with the apple, he says to him, I have your apple right here. And then the baby also has an apple, and he took, like, a tiny bite out of it. Yeah, he's got an apple with a little tiny bite in it. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really good. Uh, Gidoki says, can you please explain this to me in 30 words or less? If you can't, I don't care. And like, yeah, it's... and they say it like four times. Like everyone keeps doing it. Yeah, and then finally, finally has like... was like, "Shut up!" And yeah, and he, he he gives the full breakdown. He's like, "Oh, okay. Well, I was gonna. I came here to give you back this baby, but now that I know the full thing, I don't think you need. I don't think you deserve this baby." Uh, I like the fight with him and Okada because they do uh, a real cool thing where because the dude is blind. He sees his attack go off first, so he doesn't realize that his sword's been broken. So when he goes for his attack inside, he sees basically um, that he's cut off uh, Gintoki's arm. And then in reality, Gintoki was able to stop it by destroying the thing beforehand, which he set up uh, the last time they clashed together, which I thought was cool. It was a cool way to get rid of this guy. And then he immediately like destroys him by like doing a single strike over the head, um, which is, I think, the... F- first time we've seen him fight at least someone seriously with a sword before i think he's fought hijikata before but he wasn't really taking that super seriously <laughs> and same thing goes for um kondo as well he fought him with the sword but he wasn't taking it very seriously this was him actually taking it seriously yeah so was, this was like an actual samurai battle yeah so that was cool to see 
Uh, the I kind of like the the background of them explaining the backstory about who the father was. Also, the father looks a lot like Gintoki, uh, except for not as not as crazy in the hair. I think that's basically the main difference is that he's not as crazy. Pretty much, the yeah. Way the hair. His hair is a little bit more normal. Yeah. I also like this was a gag in the first one, but he said, "Do you think that I would give a child? I would curse a child with my hair. I would twist my own genes <laughs> if I could stop them from inheriting my wavy hair." Yeah, my naturally wavy hair. <laughs> yeah, I would twist my own <laughs> genetics to stop it. Um, uh, the, and during the backstory, they talk about how they met, and the dude like fakes out having this huge uh, blood attack, and he goes like, "Haha, just a joke." And then the mom's still freaking out, and she's going like, yeah. "Oh my god, someone, <laughs> please call someone." He's like, "I'm okay." He's like, "I, I'm fine," and she keeps screaming and like runs away. <laughs> Yeah, and you, all the while she's having, like, this super sad backstory voice tone to it of, like, ah, yes, he did like playing his tricks. And she goes, like, please, someone, he's in danger. <laughs> I thought that was great. I kind of like the, the message of them kind of being, like, a, uh, a cherry blossom, I think is the main thing that they say here. Uh, the, the, the main guy, who is the bad guy in this one, who is the grandfather, said that he would treat his son. Basically, when his wife and him learned that his son was always going to have this disease, they said that even if he was only going to have one-third of the normal lifespan, they would just have to give him, like, three times the normal amount of, I guess, love and attention in that span of time. Uh, treat him, I guess, kind of like a cherry blossom, which doesn't live very long, but it still lives a full, fulfilling, like, cycle of things. Which is what the father actually ends up seeing himself as, and it ends up coming off at the end as well with the, the cherry blossoms as they look at stuff as well through the spring. So I kind of like that. It was a nice little bit of messaging there at the beginning. Uh, the relationship here at the end, I really like it between Gintoki and this baby. Because <laughs> when he's having I know. His... Gintoki's relationship with this baby is by far like the high point of it is. everything that's happening. Because at the start, he really does not want this kid to be his. <laughs> Wait, in, that, in that first episode, we glossed over it, but there's a bit where he's, like, walking by, and he sees it, and then he keeps walking forward, and he keeps, like, doubling back, and he keeps doubling back, and the more time he's been poking his nose the entire time, and he keeps getting more bloody over time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, crazy bleeding. So for him to have this ending of this baby, basically him and the baby ending on good terms of bonding together and agreeing to drink with each other when the time comes, if the baby can remember, which I think, you know, not to say, I don't know what happens in these episodes going forward, but I'm going to say right now, I'm pretty sure that baby's going to remember that and he'll have a nice drink in my head cannon. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that that baby is going to totally remember. remember that. 100%. That's the way I want to see it. I don't want to live in a world where this baby doesn't remember this. <laughs> <laughs> I choose to believe in this kind of world. Uh, also, that, that image of him on the, the park bench with the baby is <laughs> very funny as well. Yeah, where the baby is just sitting there drinking out of the bottle while he's drinking the milk. Yeah. Um, pretty good. Uh, Hasegawa also has some pretty dumb joke here where he pees his pants. And I think this is also a callback from later on in the previous episode where when the when the kid pees himself, Kentucky says, hey, don't worry. That's a thing that uh, all men do that we don't have control over what it, what it, it tells us to do. And uh, Hasegawa ends up peeing himself and then he tries to play it off like, oh, obviously, like the pee, like I can just take off my uh, uniform and it'll be OK. And then when he removes it, it turns out it's soaked into the pants, everything. It's like it's just 100 percent. Yeah, situation. it's not. Uh, well, yeah, he's like, oh, I there's no way I peed myself. I definitely this is just a cleaning spill, obviously. Uh, and then he takes his apron off and it's in his pants. And then at this point, I think Cogger's also laughing at him in the background. She <laughs> is. Cogger's laughing hysterically the whole time. And then also, uh, um, mm -hmm. it's funny because he's like, woo. I was so scared, I almost peed myself. And then he looks down, and he did, and he's like, well, I am 38 already. <laughs> and this, this also <laughs> ends up with him also wearing diapers near the end, and I think there's also a bit where he says, I think when they're good, saying their goodbyes, he says, I thank you for forgetting my shameful moment. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it was, it was good. It was really good. <laughs> so... I like this episode. It was very nice. It was, uh, it was very hard. I'll say the one thing is that it's they made that old dude just super unlikable. So even when he has his moments, I'm like, well, okay, if she's, I guess, okay with it, I guess, to a certain point. 
this guy probably had some kind of issues, but he's like talking nonstop trash to her, just being like whatever. Yeah, he, he's a huge shitbag. Yeah, it's like whore. Un- like, he's like saying all these terrible things. I'm like, God damn, he deserves an ass kicking. He doesn't deserve like to be a part of any form of this child's life, but you know, whatever. I guess to a certain point, uh, that child is going to be perfectly well off if 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 he, she plays nice with the grandfather. So. What can you do in that instance? But at least they do kind yeah. of go off the show. Like, he obviously took the wrong side. Like, at some point, he missed the mark about what he should have been doing as a father. And he kind of does lament about, like, I've made the wrong decisions in life. I've, 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 I've fucked up. So, very enjoyable two-parter right here with the with this baby. Who I, 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 what is his real name? What is the baby's actual name? Because he has so many names, but I forgot what his actual name is. It's uh the baby's real name Hashido is Kanshinshiro. Uh, why is this Um Hashida Kanshishiro. Something, something. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. The baby. Ba- <laughs> the, the baby. Ba- yeah, it's baby the baby. Kentucky. The the baby. Yeah. How do you feel about it, Zen? Good episode. Real good episode. Um the the baby saga was was quality the whole way through i feel like um i like uh pretty much every moment yeah with gintoki and the baby i liked fighting the samurai guy i thought that was good um the whole scene of like him cutting off gintoki's arm and then he doesn't actually um and gintoki's like ah you must have had a vision of you doing that but you can't actually see anything because you're fucking blind, so you didn't know your sword was broken. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? Kentucky also has a very good line where he just like uh, shoots strays at the mom for some reason, where when the, the baby is in the grandfather's arms, he starts fidgeting, which he's never done up until this point. And Kentucky basically takes it as, like, he can now understand this baby. And he's like, ah, mm, okay, here's what he's saying. He said he would rather suck off the flat chest of this woman here than l- yeah, be in your hairy chest. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. could you not be so vulgar? <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> but I was like, I was wondering, I was like, damn, is this mob catching strays out of nowhere? <laughs> that was pretty good him understanding that baby fully. I believe that that's actually what the child said. He's just a conduit as to what he said. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. Just a quality, quality episode. Yeah, a good, a good start for gonna this. Gonna miss that baby. Gonna miss him. It's unfortunate he could not join the odd jobs team at the end. <laughs> he could yeah. hire a baby to join <laughs> forth with him. Uh, oh, here's also a pretty good line. I think he says, no, is this in the end bit episode? I don't remember when they say this. Women in anime are more appealing if they're a bit mysterious. Uh, it's it's not women in anime. It's women and anime. <laughs> Both yes, women are and more anime. appealing. Yeah. If they're, if they're more mysterious. I don't remember where he says that, but they do say that. I think that's point. a preview. I think it's Kagura that says that. I think okay. it's in the preview. This must be for the next episode, which is episode 53, which has a really good gag at the end where uh, Gintoki says the entire title super fast. Yes, uh, and the title's crazy long. Yes. The title in the episode is called Stress Makes You Bald, but it's stressful to avoid stress, so you end up stressed out anyway, so in the end there's nothing you can do. And when he says it in there, he goes like, he says it like, because it's actually, I think, way longer in Japanese than it is in English. Uh, yeah, actually, looking at it as it's supposed to be said, it's much longer in Japanese than it is in English. <laughs> so, good bit. Tell us what it's about, then. So, uh, Gintoki is going to throw out his jumps uh, on the combustible trash day because he says that um, jump is fine to be combustible because it sets my heart ablaze. Um and then Otose gets mad because it's not magazines are supposed to go with the recyclables. And it turns out that there's an arsonist burning all of the trash, and Gintoki gets caught by this person um, trying to put out a fire because he sees that there's a fire. 
And so he's trying to uh, put it out, obviously, by peeing on it, because of course he is. And then she attacks him, and she's like, he's the arsonist, and it's not really. And he gets kind of put, she gets put down by the firefighter group that she's, like, working with. Um, and they basically say, like, oh, women can't fight, but can't be firefighters. Like, it can't be done. Um, so she and Gintoki have, like, a bonding moment. Um, and they start making these this parallel to, like, life is a soap bubble. Uh, and they say it like a million times. <laughs> it's it's throughout um, this entire episode. <laughs> yeah, they say it just constantly this whole episode that uh, life is like a soap bubble, um, and it's like fleeting. <laughs> um, <coughs> Kentucky ends up um, helping her because she gets like bullied by children while she's hiding in a trash can, and they knock it over and everything. Um, and so he comes to help her just because they had that little bonding moment, as Gintoki often does. Um, and they see the the firefighter chief, the one who bullied her. Um, and we get like a little flashback because it looks like he's the arsonist for a minute. And we get a flashback to turn out that he is essentially her uh, adopted dad because her family died in a fire and he rescued her. Um, and he took care of her. And he said at first it was like to to pay his debt to her family for not saving them, um, but then he ended up like loving her as a as an adopted child of his own. Uh, there, a, a fire gets started by the arsonist in an alleyway, and it starts burning a house down. And there's this old man that for some reason can't like hear anything that's being said to him unless it's rude, because at some point she calls him like she calls him a name. I don't remember what she calls him. But, but that's the only thing he man. reacts to. Yeah. And he reacts to, and he understands that. And she's like, why is that the only thing you can hear? <laughs> um, and she goes in to try to get him out. And he says, the, I think the funniest line in the episode, yeah. She's like, oh man, there's a fire. We have to get out of here. And he's like, uh, no, you're not putting me in an old folks home. I'm going to remain a burden on you for the rest of my <laughs> life. <laughs> um, and so she busts the door he's hiding behind down. Um, <clears throat> and she's about to get like hit by something that's falling. Uh, and in the process, the chief, her, her adopted dad, rescues her, but he gets crushed by like a bookshelf. Uh, and she's not able to pick it up by herself. So she takes the old man out. Uh, and she's going to come back for him. But then Gintoki busts in and saves him at the last minute and carries him out of the fire. And to close off with the soap bubble, he says that he also is like a soap bubble floating around. And you're trying to reach the highest point. I think is what something like that, right? Something about soap bubble. There's a lot of soap bubble metaphors in this. It's yeah, it's like uh, that life is like a soap bubble and it's not until it's about to pop that you think it could go on to be something greater. So he's thinking about like now, you know, I can actually be a father to this girl that I like we've finally kind of crossed that hurdle together and now I'm about to die, so it's like a bittersweet moment. Um, but Gintoki saves the day at the last minute. And he has like a little... He, he says something else too. He keeps getting like these really generic anime episode ending lines that are really funny to me. Because I don't know if they're intentional or not. It's hard uh, to tell. <laughs> it's very yeah. hard to tell. It's like after the baby episode he had the like, spring's almost over. And then at this one he says something else too that's like, that he's like a soap bubble that wants to soar higher than all the others as he like blows a bubble and watches it float away. Yeah, it's it, <laughs> it's very hard to tell how genuine it is being, but it works I guess in either way you want to take it. Um for this episode uh the beginning part here where there's a good part at the beginning I'm always appreciative of a good uh drop kick Katosa gives a good one to Kentoki for trying to leave his old jump magazines <laughs> in the wrong place he says that for he keeps trying to leave these jump magazines and she keeps telling him you can't just dump these things <laughs> on this day it's not their day stop doing it just literally go for the right day and uh when he sees the fire his immediate reaction is to pee on it and then when the fire gets taken out, he still has, he's still like in the position. And I forget what he said. He's like, are you ready for the show? Or something like that. He says something to her when he's like, 
uh, when she's looking at him. Because at first she thinks that she's caught him setting the fire, but he's not. He's like, I think he says, could you please not stare as he's, like, holding his junk still. <laughs> getting yeah, ready to she, he's like, uh, could you look away, please? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then when he's in there, she's interrogating him for being the arsonist. He says, for the last time, I, I keep telling you, I tried to put out the fire and I used, tried to use the only thing I had on me, which is my holy water. Yeah, he refers to his pee as his holy water. Yeah, and he keeps, she keeps talking about the traumatization of seeing his thing and seeing it out and about. He says, you know, it was very traumatizing for me as well. You also saw my thing. <laughs> like, I was the, the, the guy you saw my thing of. Uh, and that goes on for a, a bit, too, um, until finally he ends up being seen as innocent. I literally, I like the fake out of them thinking like, uh, oh, because I actually thought at the beginning it was going to be the old man that was going to be the one who set the fires. So when he showed him, like, ah, oh, damn, see, I, I knew it. But then when he yeah, puts they away did. The... The, I I thought it was going to be too. Yeah, and it was going to be something like the the firefighters were like running out of money or something, so he wanted to prove that they were still needed. D- dude, uh, and then it turns shit. out he was just throwing out porn. <laughs> Yeah, also, I thought the exact same thing. <laughs> I think it was on purpose that they were setting up. It was like, oh, okay, we're going this way. But no, when he puts out the porno books, it's like, oh, no. And then some random dude shows up and turns out to be the arsonist. So I thought that was a yeah, really good Yeah, it's just a random out. fucking guy. Yeah, he's like, would you call them burnable or something? He's like, I think we should just burn all trash. And then they go like, that's clearly the arsonist. <laughs> There's like no and hiding And it's funny because it. his whole like evil plan <laughs> is just... We should burn trash. <laughs> yes, that is his end goal here, is we should just burn trash. Um, I like when they're talking about the porno mags as well, because at some point, Kintoki joins him, and he starts talking about, like, uh, you know, I, I forget who's mentions it first, because, like, you know, I have teens at home. He's like, this is the most important thing for a teen. <laughs> this book right here is the most important thing for them. So you should actually keep it on hand. Uh, that was great. Uh, that bit with the old man where he just like refuses to be like saved in any general capacity. <laughs> yeah, kinda... he's like actively fighting to die. Yeah, it it kind of reminded <sighs> me of that joke from The Simpsons where uh, <laughs> where uh, Ned is trying to save Homer from a burning building, and he throws uh, Homer off the the house that's on fire, and he puts him, he put a mattress down below so that he would be he would safely fall. And when he throws him off the <laughs> throws him out the house into the mattress, the mattress jumps out and he throws him back inside the <laughs> inside the burning house. And he gives him a look of like huh, as he looks like up to the god and says like, oh, okay, I'm clearly being tested. You do not want this man to live. And he jumps back into the fire, so it kind of did remind me of that in the terms of just, like, this old man clearly wants to die in this fire. <laughs> he just so badly, like, it seems like the, no matter... The line where he says, I'm gonna be a burden on you for the rest of my life is so fucking funny. So good. Very good. Uh, the relationship between the firefighter lady and this old guy was very sweet. It was very touching. Kind of goes full out. They even closed the loop saying, like, how he got that burn scar. It was actually from her. Um, not, not from her, but from saving her and stuff like that. Um, the old guy talking about how he doesn't want to see anyone in his line of work because, you know, he's lost many people to it because he is a firefighter, which is fun. It's funny that the firefighting job has not gotten better with the technology that. No, nope, <laughs> not throughout the in. years. <laughs> Zero better ways to fight fire. <laughs> you can shoot a cannon at a giant. You can sh- summon giant battleships to shoot out a giant monster, but we can't improve firefighting technology. <laughs> Which is maybe more speaking to the world itself of how we treat <laughs> certain aspects of life. Um, so I thought that was good. Um, the soap bubble thing, it does get pushed on a lot, but I kind of liked it by the end of it. Where it's like, ah, yes, I'm also a, a bubble floating around. And it can be taken in any way of whether or not he's being serious <laughs> or not is, I guess, up to you. But it is a funny line regardless. Uh, and yeah, I also like that at the end, it reveals that, uh, Gintoki does not throw away any of the newspapers, the stuff that he's actually supposed to be throwing away instead of his yeah, job, he just, he just keeps, keeps it, it all. <laughs> yeah, he just keeps it all in his office. 
And Shifaji says, like, this is actively disgusting. He's like, don't touch my stuff. And then also on there, we reveal that the uh, the firefighter lady has actually become the best firefighter in all of the land, at least of where they live. So. Yes, the, the ultimate firefighter. <laughs> yes, the ultimate firefighting beauty is what the newspaper says. So, again, end of it all. Very solid episode. Uh, your mileage your mileage may vary if you don't like pee jokes, but I liked it, so it works for me. I thought it was funny. Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um. All in all, good episode. Quality up. Ep- good stuff. Uh oh oh, there's also a really good funny beatdown with Kagura show because they call his family. Uh, for some reason, the the firefighter lady calls his family and he says, "Why would you do that? <laughs> I'm not a teenager. I'm a grown man." And then when Kagura does show up, she immediately starts beating him. Was like, I thought we raised. Yeah, she's. Oh my god, that's right. She's like, uh, you good for nothing, son. Is that how I raised you? (laughs) Absolute (laughs) failure of a son. She's absolutely (laughs) beating on him. It's extremely funny. Yeah, that was really good. (laughs) So, ah, good stuff. Now move on to episode 54 which is another two-parter featuring maybe one of the most dramatic end of anime (laughs) pictures ever episode 54 mothers everywhere are all the same so Um, episode 54 uh there's just this woman in their house in the morning like yelling at them like a mom Uh, And they don't know why. Um, They, uh... She, like, keeps... She cooks them food, and she's, like, giving them orders and stuff, and they don't know what's going on. Tell them to, like, chew your food 20 times before you swallow. Yeah, chew your food 20 times before you swallow and stuff. And uh, they assume it's Shimpachi's mom, and then they're trying to figure out whose mom it is. And it turns out that uh, she's a client who wants their help finding their her son. Um, they uh, end up taking it, and she gives them a photo. And they, they look at the photo, and they're like, well, he doesn't even look like this anymore because he changed his face or something like that. And uh, they um, start drawing on it. And they're like, okay, well, this should help us see... Uh, who what he looks like now because the bone structure doesn't change and like all this scientific like reasoning as to why he probably looks like this and the, the, all they do is uh draw him with bigger and bigger hair every time <laughs> yeah they keep putting, adding <laughs> yeah, more hair they give him like a giant afro um and then they're like what the shit should we do this is our only picture we ruined it um and then they <laughs> Someone walks directly past them that looks exactly like all the scribbling they have done on the picture. Um, they end up following that person, and it is a guy named Hachiro that works at like a nightclub. Um, they all look very visibly uncomfortable being in a nightclub. They are not fans of it. <laughs> Except for Kagura, who's a big fan of it. <laughs> Except Kagura, yeah. Kagura is loving every minute of it. Um, they, uh, these guys come in that are like, uh, like a gang, um, and they're trying to shake them down for money that they're not paying because they want like protection money. Um, and then our main trio comes out dressed up like members of the staff. Um, yeah, like they're like part of the, the hostess staff. And uh, Gintoki gets this close up where he points at the camera and he just says, just do it (laughs) in English. (laughs) And then it ends. Which is a reference to the Nike. (laughs) Just do it. Uh, What does Shimpachi say? He does like, I'll do it until I Uh, die. Even if my... Even, uh, even if it costs my life. Even if it costs my life, he keeps saying that at every single given point. And Kagura has a tick, too, but I don't remember what it is right now. Uh, she says foo at the end of all of her sentences. There you go. Uh, and then also, 
it ends with the most dramatic fucking art ever. It's it's real. It's hard to describe this bit, photo ever, but it's like one of those like Yu Hakusho ending bits. You know what I mean? Where the art is like super stylized, except for it's all three of them dressed up as hosts. This fucking terrifying mother, the the um, the yakuza guy, the guy with the giant afro laid out in the back. And it feels, like, too detailed for what is a very stupid situation. Yes. I thought that was very uh, An extremely stupid situation. Yeah. <clears throat> so, for the start of this one, I like some of the, um... Some, they hint to it. There, There's a more clear hint to it in the next episode as to who is the son as they're looking for him. Um, but there is some hints here early on if you're paying attention about who the son could probably be um, it, that you can pick up on if you are not in the full belief that the guy with the afro is maybe not the son. <laughs> or if you're just fully believing that this guy with the afro is, in fact, the son. But um, there's some nice hints in there that kind of like lead you to who is the actual son of the person. Because spoilers, it turns out that the guy with the afro is not not the actual son. It was just a, a man who with a very large afro who had a botched uh, plastic surgery. <laughs> and a very yes. unfortunate botched uh, plastic surgery. Um, the strange woman is very annoying, and uh, there is something kind of endearing about how annoyingly earnest she is. Um, I like it at the beginning. Yeah, where... there's... Mm -hmm. uh, um, I was going to talk about the point where... Um... She sees like the the girl. What what are they called? Gyaru. The girls who, yeah, Gyaru girls, and she's like, someone call an ambulance for these poor women. <laughs> Please help them. <laughs> they look like how my how my uh, uh, not my no no how my husband looked when he died. Um, there, there's a lot of like, of like she's so crazy, just mother like that. It ends up being like, ah, I, I kind of like you, even though I feel like you're supposed to be extremely annoying. There's a really good bit at the beginning where he, they're making fun of how she looks, where he says like, "What is that thing on top of your forehead? Is it a self destruct button? And if I press it, will you just explode?" Yeah, if I press it, will you go away? Yeah, go um, away and explode. I like. All the times that Kentucky keeps saying she's from the country, forgive her, over and over again. <laughs> over and over again as an excuse for how she's acting. Um, I really like it when uh, the th uh, the Yakuza guys are going to attack her, and that's enough for Kentucky to... He fights back and says, like, listen, you can wear your weird uh, sh uh, um, uh, sandals with socks on, but damn it, you are not going to hit an old woman in front of me. And he keeps yeah, like, he says, like, but you don't raise your hand to an old woman. No, and then he starts like make, like talking down on how they dress, like as if to say he's like an old man telling him to dress better. And then the old woman starts following up, and she goes back for the gyaru. She's like, yeah, and put those socks up. And then you see the girls in the background; they put their socks on, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was really good. Uh, I do like the bit where they're messing around with the photo and they just keep adding all this stupid thing and it turns out there's a dude with this comically large afro that is like right there with it as well. <laughs> just Yeah, the literally the minute they that they are like, well, we have to give up on this picture. It's useless now. He's just right there. Yep, he's right there. Um, I think there's a bit, I think it's... I think it's here where he starts to be like host, a host, where he doesn't fully understand what a host is, and he keeps like saying it back and back and back and forth over and over again, in his head trying to make sense about what's going on. Um, of course, when Cocker is actually in there and she starts like talking down the other dudes, saying like how you should treat a woman. Uh, if you're with an older woman, you should treat her like a young woman, but when you're with a younger one, you should treat her as a mature person. So even if they ask for a Don Perry, you give them milk. And she's like, okay, let me order you some milk. And he, she slaps him and says, like, do I look like a woman who drinks milk? I can handle an energy drink. Yeah. And then she's like, uh, <laughs> Oh, my one boyfriend told me that uh, you can't you can't handle this stuff. I wonder how he is today. And it's like <laughs> a super detailed shot. Yeah, it's dramatic. really funny. Yeah, and then she goes back. I've actually had two. <laughs> and then they go back to the um, 
to them and they're not enjoying the situation at all. Gintoki and uh, Shinpachi and the old mom as the old mom feels like she's being sexually harassed. I think she says like sexual harassment and then Gintoki says your face is a sexual harassment. Yeah, she says that she's being sexually harassed because um, the the guy bumped her boob with his elbow mm-hmm. and then uh, he was like will you shut up? Your face is sexual harassment. <laughs> Yeah, just really laying it into her about uh, that kind of stuff. But and then uh, the ending bit here, which is the the fucking the just do, the fact that he keeps saying just do it, then he gets like called out for it in the next episode, saying stop saying that. It's not a catchphrase. It's not gonna catch on if you keep saying that over and over and over again. Uh, was really funny. Um, it also helps that it was in English. <laughs> that makes it that much funnier. Yes, every every time he says "just do it," was in English. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, and he, he there's another good bit with him in the next episode, but a good start for a first part part winner, uh, I would say. Uh, enjoyable. Yeah, start. it's a solid part one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very solid. So let's move on. Do you have anything specific to say about this one before we move on? Uh, no, nothing that we didn't cover, but I do think it was funny. Um. When in the preview for this episode, where the the narrator's like, "Wow, it's the first time they've had actual work in a while." <laughs> yeah, that is a good bit. <laughs> this is actually the first time they had a, an actual job in a very long time. That's pretty good. Uh, and next one, episode fifty-five. Don't make munching noises when you eat. Go ahead and tell us what's about. So it continues with the confrontation at the nightclub. Uh, Gintoki starts uh, kind of fighting these guys a little bit. He cracks two of them with a bottle when they go to attack them. Uh, Kagura gets the old lady out of the way. And then the leader gets like a call on his phone or like a text that some woman has given birth and he runs off. And they're like, oh, no, I wasn't there for the birth and everything. And, and so it, it seems like it's like his wife or something. And it turns out it was a puppy. Um, or it was like a dog had puppies. I think that was and always the they, bit is that it was supposed to be a, a dog. Because he talks about his dog is going to give birth in the first in the previous episode. And then in this one, it actually happens. Oh, did he? I did not. I must have missed the line where he mentioned that yeah, the dog no, was going to give birth. He, I remember um, him being very incensed <laughs> that he was not with his dog during its time of need. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, they find that the old woman has gone missing and they don't know where she is. Um, she ends up going with the other guys, and so they uh, she's just like in their evil base, and then one of the puppies is like sick, or he's not breathing, um, and they don't know what to do, and she ends up giving it like puppy CPR um, and and bringing it back. They're all grateful for it and all, and they want to know who it is. And she tells them like, uh, I'm Satra's mom. I'm Hachira's mom. I'm trying to find him. Um, the big boss shows up and says that he knows who Hachiro is. And it turns out that Hachiro is not the guy at the club named Hachiro, but the other guy named like Kyoshiro. Um, the gang has no luck finding the mom. They've been trying to find her and they can't. And then the Kyoshiro dude gets a call saying that they have the mother uh, and they've got her like tied up at this construction site. And so they go to... uh, He goes to pay them money to free her, but then Gintoki and the crew show up and rescue her at the last minute in like a big protracted fight. Um... She makes like a special meal for them in payment, and then Kyoshiro also gets some of it as well. It's like a meal that he must have eaten as a child. Um, the note shows that the mother already knew who it was, and she just didn't say anything, uh, but that she's very proud of him and all. And he has this very emotional uh, moment, kind of like crying over the food that his mother left that he eats. And then it ends with her uh, train pulling back into the country. Yeah, and then she's also complaining about don't <laughs> munch when you're eating because you know I find that yeah. very annoying. And then she is of course munching <laughs> loudly, munching mm-hmm. while she's eating her rice ball. 
just showing that this character is the ultimate culmination of every single mom dr- trope out there <laughs> into literally one just woman. every mo- like negative mom trope there is. Yeah. Uh huh. So very nice uh, end of the episode. Um, start us off here. The beginning bit here, um, as I think the closest we've ever gone to full on Looney Tunes style like gags and muck muck em ups, <laughs> where where he's like actively going like. Uh, it's it kind of reminds me of like a Bugs Bunny bit where he would like show up in different outfits and just like mess with them and then the person he's messing with would be like ah oh, yes this makes perfect sense you're I don't recognize you whatsoever person who was here before <laughs> yes um I also really like the bit in the beginning where Kentucky's fighting the dudes off and uh he's like we got orders for this drink. And Shimpachi's behind the counter, and he yells from behind the counter, Yeah, even if it costs my life! And he hurls the bottles across the counter. Yeah, some more Don Perry. Hits him mm-hmm. with the Don Perry. Um, I like the... There's an argument about... Th- this is the bad, This is the gag that reminded me of the, the Looney Tunes. The three gag. The three and seven. Where they keep going back and forth about seven and three. Where he's like, uh, huh? Seven, three, three, seven, three? It's like oh, a very yeah, specific like, Japanese the- joke. The golden ratio of, of rice to crackers or something. Yeah, were they talking about the golden ratio? <laughs> so many specific weird things in this one, uh, which if you don't know, the seven... Which the is also is funny if you're a Jason Kaisen fan, because Nanami's curse technique is called the ratio technique, and the ratio technique works on a 7-3 ratio. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It is on the uh, the golden ratio. It was mm-hmm. funny to me because I think the golden ratio is what Da Vinci created to say what is the perfect dynamics of life in general, I think. They taught me this in our class, but just like most things in our class, I wasn't fully paying attention <laughs> about what the golden ratio was about. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Yeah, but I do know it exists, and I remember thinking, oh, yeah, that's how Da Vinci did all his stuff. And I was like, really? Well, all right, cool. It's a cool thing to hear. Um, I like it's it when... It's a thing. Yes, it is as well. The golden ratio is it's everywhere if you look for it. If you once you actually legitimately know, which is what when like a week after I learned about the golden ratio, you actually see a lot of stuff is built toward the golden ratio because it truly is the perfect. Like, damn, this fool had a thing going on. He he had his shit together. This Da Vinci, whenever he th- discovered this, <laughs> um, I like the bit where <clears throat> when the with the dog where this stupid gang which this gang is apparently the last of the four uh, emperors of um the thing that Atose is a part of that we don't see who the actual their boss we don't see who we he don't is see getting. him yeah we only see like his but, legs as he walks out yeah we only see that we only hear that there was he had potentially maybe had a thing for Atose but they have had bad bloods over the ledger, <laughs> the same ledger that was from... Uh, yeah, the neighborhood notebook. Yeah, there's apparently been beef that's been going on for 10 years <laughs> related to this ledger. So that was, well, that was funny. It was a good callback to that stuff as well. Because someone brought it up that there's actually been a lot of stuff of this ledger in the past. It just that it didn't become a thing until this thing. And I was like, oh, shit. And I guess they are right. This freaking random ledger has actually been in the integral to the series this entire time. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, when she's uh, when she's saving the puppy, uh, this gang turns into, like, the biggest group of dumbasses in the world. Where they're like, what are we going to do? I don't know what to do. What are we going to do with save the puppy, man? It's not breathing. What are we going to do? And he's like, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't want it to die. And then she shows up and he's like, you're all idiots. And she tells him, like, men shouldn't cry or something like that. I forget, unless there's a specific scenario in which you do it. Um, and then she's able to save the puppy, which is also the reason why I think I ended up really liking her is that I can't actually hate a character who saves a puppy. <laughs> yeah, she does. She gives like, like animal CPR to the puppy. Yeah. And, she saves, uh, and she rescues saves, it. Yeah. She saves its life. And then when I like her excuse of the reason she showed up, they didn't kidnap her, which is what they thought. She actually just kind of showed up there cause she heard there was a birthing going on and you need a mother there when there's a birth going on. <laughs> Yeah, her whole thing is that she's like, uh, where I'm from, every mother is everyone's mother, and every kid is everyone's kid. Yeah, the, a very country-like way of looking at the world, which is actually not... It actually feels kind of nice. I guess there's a, the reason that she comes off so annoying is that there's a level of sincerity there that has been bred out of us for living in the high yeah, city life. Yeah, it's, 
Yeah, it, it's like it, you're right that it comes off as like naive almost. Yeah, no one should be and this And so like nice. my immediate reaction is to be like shut the fuck up. <laughs> yes, yes, 100%. I've had this a specific um conversation with a, f- a friend of mine that grew up in the south where he's like there's a lot just more mean people here in California. <laughs> It's like uh, I come off a little bit weird for it too, because I come off a little bit too friendly. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I remember when I first met you, I thought you were a little bit too friendly, and it made me feel a little wary. And it is a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little fucked up where that that's the way I think. But you know, that's life for a city folk, I guess. So yeah, I kind of like that. It's a shame that you can be too friendly, but yeah, alas, alas, <laughs> I shake my sad fist. Um, the rescue over was uh, pretty nice. I like that. There's a really dumb fart joke, which is, I guess, another callback to the weird bean she was eating in the previous episode, where she, like, farts directly in the dude's face and takes him out. And he's like, Yes, oh that was funny. Yeah. And then she's also very embarrassed about it as well. She knows that she probably hit someone from it, which is pretty good. Um, <clears throat> the sun was also uh, pretty nice. Uh, Tim too. He refuses to give up his establishment that he's built with, um, because he's built up with it. But he'll gladly give whatever money he's made instead if that will be enough. Uh, there is a kind of a bit. I, I still wasn't a hundred percent sure on this one, but there is a bit with Hashiro where they reveal that uh, he's actually trans. They say it in a very 2000 way of saying it, but it didn't feel like Yes, because too... they call him, what do they call him, a tranny? Is that what they yes, say? Yes, that is a translation yes. for it. Well, I was like, well, that is... I, was, I was expecting yeah, it to go into some... Yeah, that felt a little... Yeah, it's a little bit of a translation thing, and there was a, obviously there's a, a like a doom kind of reveal for it. It kind of does take away a little bit of the fun of the reveal of... I guess their specific reaction to it, I guess. It felt a little bit weird, because I did really like that gag, but then it does that, and I was like, I was expecting it to go a kind of different direction from that point. But they don't really make fun of it. They just kind of go like, oh, okay. This person was trans all along. Okay. <laughs> I guess yeah, that's Yeah, they it. have, like, this shocked moment, but then it just kind of passes, so. Yeah, which, again, for the time, it could be much worse. <laughs> Not to give a full yes. pass to it, but I will say. It wasn't great, but it, it could have been. Much Awful. worse. Much worse. So I'll give him something for that at least. Um, and of course, I actually do really do like that ending bit where, as I've said previously, family stuff I can I can really enjoy. Um, this one specifically is really nice where the idea of like him getting his mom's cooking and enjoying it. And then also the people that the girls that he are with are just like, ew, obviously our super beautiful man would never eat stuff like this because it really is just like pumpkin sliced pumpkins it's a very country thing to kind of eat which i think she also said that in the uh, in the first part of the episode she always made it very clear that that's what she was going to be paying them with was with sliced pumpkins um so when she actually cooks it for him uh and then she actually gives some to her son which she's like i obviously knew all along um you know she gives the basic mom thing i love you stuff like that I thought it was very nice as he kind of just enjoys the meal and especially with how he was feeling or he didn't feel like he was doing good enough, which I can kind of understand that from an idea of just like not living up to not exactly the expectations, but the expectations that you've built up for yourself of saying like, I'm not good enough to be in this specific level. And there's like a certain level of guilt of why he didn't want to specifically reveal himself. And the mother in a sort of way acknowledges it while still saying, I'm still your mom. So I still love you regardless. Here's some pumpkin slices. Don't chew when you eat. I thought that was very nice. (laughs) It was a very, very nice heartfelt kind of thing. And, uh, he got to enjoy some nice little pumpkins, so pretty pretty nice overall. It was a nice way of it was a nice closer for this uh, mom arc. <laughs> so that's yeah, it was about. cute. It was nice. Yeah, how'd you um, feel? It was a sweet little episode. the The mom bit kind of wore on me after a while because I was like, okay, yeah, she's mom. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. She one is still a mom. Part. Yep. Um. Yeah, it, it it was long. It got it got tiring, um, but it was it was a sweet, cute little episode. Yeah, very. And nice. I really like the just do it because like every time it zooms in on Gintoki's face and he goes, "Just do it." Yeah, just do <laughs> it's it. Really funny. And then there was a part where he's fighting where he just says, "Do it, do it, do it, do it." Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> 
All right, we're back here because we completely forgot that this end bit because it's the end uh, because this bit is related to the actual start of the next episode because the episode actually doesn't end with just that heartfelt story stuff. It actually leads into the shish and gumi stuff that I completely forgot because it's literally just set up for the next episode. Um, not much other than to say that Okita tried to stop someone and then. Oh, fuck. What does what, what he stop specifically? Do you know what I'm talking about? Because it literally shows up after the the episode is over. No, I stopped right as the credits started rolling. Yeah, that, that's what I figured because I was like, oh, shit, there's actually more to the episode. And I didn't realize it until I looked at my notes that there was more. So give me a sec as I look it up. Uh, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. It really is really weirdly tacked on. It's like one of those things of like, we're just going to start a little bit of the next episode. Um, uh... So basically what's happening here is that the Shishingumi are hiring, uh, a, a to- not a Tose, they're hiding the, a Tosu, a Tosu the idol to help up with the Shishingumi numbers. And the main thing here is that, which is a funny bit because I wanted to mention it, they bring up the fact that in Ra- in uh, in Japan, uh, Rocky Four is called Rocky Four: The Flames of Friendship. <laughs> ah, that's amazing. That is an amazing name. Uh, Hijikata makes a joke saying Rocky Three: The Flames of Friendship, and then a translator note says, "Actually, in Japan, Rocky Four was called Flames of Friendship." <laughs> so that's great. But it's basically just like a little end bit to get us up for the next episode. I felt like bringing it up because it would have felt weird to say like, how come you didn't talk about that? The reason is, is that it's literally tacked on all the way at the end and I th- forgot about it up until this point. Okay, I will edit that in somewhere and then we will continue on with our goodbyes. So clap. Okay. Done here. <laughs> yeah, very nice. So... That is episode 55, and that is also uh, the end of another arc. That one was called the mom arc, the mother arc. So, next week, so we have to actually talk something out here, believe it or not. Because next week we have episode 56, 57, 58, six, uh, 59, and 60. Um, and then episode 61 is the actual end of arc episode, so we just maybe we probably should watch that one just to be sure. But the next one is episode 58 for 61 is the next big arc, which is the Benny Zakaru arc is what it's called here on the Wikipedia thingy, so I'm going to go with that. This arc actually has um, a movie based on it. Uh, you made years later. The first uh, Gintama movie is actually a retelling of this arc with nicer animations and some slight changes to it. Uh, someone brought it up to us, uh, brought it up to us in the comments saying like, so how are you going to specifically do that? Um, are you going to actually see the episodes? Or are you going to maybe see the, the movie, which is a nicer quality and has all this extra stuff to it? Uh, I think now that we can talk it out here, cause I didn't tell you this beforehand, which now that I think about it, I should really should have told you that beforehand, but, but what we'll probably yeah. do is that we will still see these episodes and then we will talk about the movie afterwards and then just kind of compare and contrast it to that way yeah we can do um, it yeah that seems like the best way of doing it um it probably will feel a little bit weird for us to be like oh yeah here's the same thing we just saw but with nicer animation to it uh but in this way we can at least see the actual experience of it because i think this was the movie was not made for another like three years i think that is like the difference in it so the animation quality will be jumping up high and there will be some other changes to it so chances are what we'll do is the next uh, Gintama episode, we'll do 56, 57, and then we'll see the four episodes. And then the next week after that, we will see the movie and talk about the movie and see the differences to it. It'll be kind of interesting to see if there's maybe some other stuff that might get... <laughs> we might end up seeing things that are a little bit early about of focused. All I didn't look up too much of it. I just saw that it's the same plot, but just slightly different. I assume it's kind of like... Um, there was a One Piece movie for Chopper where uh, they did a movie based off of Chopper, but they switched the order around a little bit. So they had, because um, there's certain characters that are not with them when they get Chopper, so they changed it around. So I think I think Brooks is like in that movie and like it's made to be like, so Chopper is the final member that actually joins the crew. So I think it's maybe something like that, but 
I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. So chances are we're going to be going with this, and then the next week after it, we'll actually talk about the movie and do all that other kind of fun stuff. So look forward to that. Sound good to you, Zen, now that I've talked about that what we're going to be doing? All right, perfect. We'll have to go track down and see where that movie is. <laughs> see if we're... Yes. If, if it's not on Crunchyroll, I will slide a link your direction <laughs> and see okay. see what we could do here. But a link you. to, obviously, a legitimate uh, service that we can oh, yeah. use Buy to watch it. it on. Definitely not pirating. Never. Are you kidding me? Nah, and we've pirates? never done that. We've never done that. Yeah. Never. Never in the history of It's not our thing. World. You can never go back in time and see the mountains of anime that I've illegally downloaded because it's never happened. <laughs> I don't yeah. own 52 episodes of an anime that I've illegally downloaded. That's never happened before. I don't have... Yeah, I don't know a... what you're talking about. That's never never been a thing. Yeah, and also as a side thing, I don't have over 102 episodes of Super Sentai on my computer. Never. I would never <laughs> illegally download... <laughs> Super Sentai episodes to watch for later. <laughs> never. So not a chance. <laughs> not zero. Chance. Yeah. I've also never, never really been seen manga either. I've always uh, paid or been in a pay service. <laughs> the Shonen Jump app, obviously. Obviously, yeah, of course. Yeah. Even though I treat it as I give them money for the Shonen Jump app, I should illegally be able to read all these things. They don't translate themselves. <laughs> That's how I see yeah, I gave them the goddamn kinda. money. <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's like, I gave them money. I don't know what the fuck they want from me. They don't have this on their service. Add Slam Dunk, goddammit. <laughs> Add... Yeah, I don't know why there aren't, like, adding more things. I don't know either. Slam Dunk, that first movie's coming out. The first dunk, as it's called. Look forward the to first that. first dunk. Yeah, Slam That's Dunk, funny. the first dunk. Even though it's very clearly set after many dunks. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all the first dunk, actually. No. I'm like, the character's hairstyle is not like it was in the beginning of the manga, so therefore this is not the first dunk. You are lying to us. You're lying to the people. Uh, but anyway, that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, we thank you very much for your support. You can always show support by leaving a like, commenting down below, because it helps with YouTube stuff. Uh... And following me or going to Zen's uh, channel as well and following him. I don't think I actually linked to your channel, but if you look up Zenrado <laughs> on YouTube, if you go to YouTube and type in Zenrado.com, <laughs> you will find Zenrod's episodes. <laughs> Zenrado.com, that's my website, yeah. Yes, the website. It's my web can, zone. Yep, web zone where you can feed, uh, find Zen and uh, Zen's uh, partner in crime, the Ocean Man, as they talk about Shonen Jump manga and all that other good stuff. So, and then on my side, you know what I'm doing because I assume you're already subscribed to me. But anyway, that's the end, everyone. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week or next episode because uh, we'll also be able, to, we're finally going to be able to talk about GX this time because I actually watched the episodes. So look forward to that as well. You've been waiting for the return of GX. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you guys next time. Say goodbye, Zen. See you later, everybody. Bye bye.